brothers and sisters, I bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pray for you and your families that you are yet well. We know that this too shall pass. And we are, want you to know that we are praying uh, that God will allow you to stay sheltered in until this uh, calamity passes over. And we know that when it's all said and done, to God be the glory. I want to begin uh, preaching uh, from a series for the next few Sundays. And I want to entitle this series, The Faith Factor. The Faith Factor. For the next few Sundays, I will be preaching about faith. I want to encourage you, don't stop believing. Things will get better. Don't lose faith that America will bounce back. Don't lose faith in the decency of humanity. You're seeing people all around the country stepping up and stepping out. And most importantly, no matter what you may lose, don't lose faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we are talking about faith for teaching and preaching purposes during this series, we are talking about faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ is the undeterred, the undefeated, and the undisputed Savior of the world. Jesus is the undeterred Savior of the world because the cross at Calvary could not stop him. Jesus is the undefeated Savior of the world because death and the grave could not hold him. Jesus is the undisputed Savior of the world because before he got ready to ascend into heaven, he made this declaration. All authority in heaven and earth are now in my hands. So when we talk about the faith factor, we are talking about a firm belief, confidence, or trust in Jesus the Christ. Jesus is still the Christ in our crises, in our chaos, in our conditions, and in our circumstances. And today I want to begin with this first sermon found in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4 and verses 35 through verse 41. Reading from the New International Version, you'll find these words recorded. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we perish or if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey. Brothers and sisters, for the time that is ours, I want to use this topic, a crisis of faith. A crisis of faith. It has been said before 
that a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Your faith must undergo strategically designed procedures in order to produce supremely developed production. The automobiles that we drive must undergo testing. Clothing that we wear must undergo testing. The home that we live in has to be in state. The prescriptions that we take must be tested. And yes, brothers and sisters, even our faith must be tested. In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 3 through 4, the writer says this, For you know that when your faith is tested, and yes, even our faith must be tested. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Brothers and sisters, we must endure the testing of our faith. In our text, we see that Jesus and his disciples are on a boat. They have left the shore and now they are on their way to the other side. But while they are traveling to the other side, a storm blows in. A storm that is so significant that it terrifies these uh, seasoned veterans. They have seen storms before. They have endured storms before. But this particular storm is something that they cannot handle. My brothers and sisters, we too sometimes we'll encounter those storms in our lives that seem to be out of our control. COVID-19 seemingly just blew in out of nowhere. America was doing fine. The economy was doing fine. People's jobs were doing fine. Everything was going well, and all of a sudden, COVID-19 shows up and disrupts everything. When things happen like this, sometimes there is a crisis of our faith. These disciples find themselves in a position where everything that they thought they knew didn't seem to work. I don't know if you've ever been there before in your life. A place where everything that you tried seemed not to work. Every course that you decided to take seemed to be the wrong way. Life sometimes comes with uncertainties. But if we don't lose our faith. Our faith will allow us to go through the storms of life knowing that this too shall pass. I want to use these disciples to help us to try and make sure that when our faith is in a crisis that we know what to do. The first thing the text teaches us is this, that even though our faith may be in a crisis, we must know that the help we need is available. Amen. The help that we need is available. In Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, 
writer says this, I will lift up my eyes to the mountain from where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Philippians 4 and 19, the writer says, I pray that God will take care of all your needs with the wonderful blessings that come from Christ Jesus. But brothers and sisters, I know that there are times in our lives where it seems as if Jesus has forsaken us. I know it seems to be time in our lives when it seems as if we are in this storm all by ourselves. But I need you to understand today that the help that we need right now, it is available. The disciples remembered something. They remembered, first of all, that Jesus was on the boat with them. And can I tell you today, brothers and sisters, Jesus is in the midst of this storm with us. Jesus is in the midst of this COVID-19 with us. He's never left our side. He's never forsaken us. He's waiting on us. But he is available to help us in the midst of this storm that we find ourselves in. And I'm so glad to know that help is available. Second, we find that not only do they realize that help is available, but they also realize that help is accessible. Amen. Help to be available is no good unless it is accessible. Many people right now find themselves trying to get help because it's available. They're trying to get their uh, uh, they are paid. Uh, many people are trying to make sure that they get their unemployment checks. And they know that the help is there, but they are unable to access it. And they can be frustrated. It can be downright discouraging to know that help is available, but I have no access to it. These disciples realize something. That help is available, but they also realize that the help that they need is also accessible. The writer in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 tells us this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, the writer says, but we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Uh, brothers and sisters, we know that he is available, but he's also accessible. And someone is saying right now, Pastor, then how do I access him? And the disciples show us how to access him. The Bible said that they went down to where Jesus was, and they began to cry out, Jesus, carry thou not that we perish. In other words, if you want to access the help that's available, you got to call on the name of Jesus. I'm glad to know that when you call on him, uh, he will hear your faint cry. I'm glad to know that you can call him and he will answer you by and by. I'm glad to know that Jesus will answer when you call on him. You can call him in the morning. You can call him in the noon day. You can call him in the evening. You can call him late in the midnight hour with tears rolling down your face and he will be accessible. The disciples realize that Jesus is accessible. And they call out to Jesus, help us. We've done all that we can do and we don't know what else to do. 
Help us. Somebody listening to me today, you've done all you can do. You've tried everything that you know, and nothing seemed to be able to work. I want to challenge you today. Call on the name of Jesus. Jesus says in his word that uh, you can call me at any time and I will be accessible to you. Matter of fact, when you ask for something, you can use my name and whatever you ask in my name, the Father will grant it. I want you to know today that you have learned how to access Jesus. Access him by calling on his name. And you can call him when you're in trouble. The Bible gives us the story of Jonah. Jonah found himself in the belly of the big fish. He found himself in the bottom of the sea. But Jonah realized something. He realized that when it was almost over for him, he had one more card to play. And he called on the name of the Lord. And sometimes the reason why we find ourselves in a crisis is because the Christ simply wants us to cry out to him. When was the last time you cried out to him? When was the last time you called on him? When was the last time you went down on your knees and prayer and said, Father, I need you right now. I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. I encourage you today. Call on Jesus because there's power in that name. Jesus is the help that we need. And he's not only available, but the text shows us he's also accessible. Finally, disciples asked a puzzling question. They asked the question to Jesus, do you care that we are about to lose our lives? And somebody right out there today is asking that same question, Jesus, do you care? Do you care that my body is wrapped with pain? Jesus, do you care that I'm having a hard time trying to make the ends meet? Jesus, do you care that I don't have a job anymore? Do you care that I don't know which way to go? And it's puzzling to me that the disciples would ask the question whether or not Jesus cared. Because when we back up and read from the beginning of Mark, we'll find that Jesus began to heal the sick. I know he cared. He began to raise the dead. I know he cared. He began to heal all of those that had any type of affliction. So surely we know that he cares. The disciples should have known that he cared for them. Because if he had not cared for them, he would have left them in the storm by themselves. Thank God that not only is he available, thank God that not only is he accessible, but the thing that I like about Jesus is he is able. He is able to supply every one of your needs. One thing that I know about Jesus is he's able to meet whatever the challenge is in your life. Ephesians 3 and 20, the writer says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Jude 24, the writer said, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Brothers and sisters, we've got to know that no matter what we are going through in this life, we got to know that we've got somebody that's able to help us even in times like these. 
I know, I know you're weary, and I know that you're worn, and I, and I know that you're troubled. But you've got to know today that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. In other words, uh, that nothing that you can encounter in your life that he's not able to help you with. He's able to do all things but fail. If Abraham and Sarah were here, they would tell you that uh, he's able because we were getting ready uh, to give up on the promise that he made to us. We were ready to give up because he had told us that we were going to have a child. But we had gotten old and we had gotten gray and it was almost over for us. And then he came back to us and told us, now I'm ready to give you that child. Is there anybody here today that knows that he said to us today, is there anything too hard for God? I don't care how your resources have dried up. I don't care how the economy has fallen apart. I don't care what's going on. But what I do know is we serve a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you can ask or imagine. There's nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for our God to do. The Bible says that when they access him. He rose up, came to the front of the boat, spoke to the wind and the waves, and they obeyed. My brothers and sisters, when you're in a crisis of faith, don't lose your hope. Because as long as you've got Jesus with you, things will work out after a while. Father, we thank you for when we find ourselves in a crisis of faith, when we find ourselves yet ready to give up. Father, thank you for allowing us to remember that you are available. Thank you, oh God, for helping us to recognize that you are accessible. Thank you for helping us to know that we have the reassurance that you are able. Father, I know that God, you are able to do all things but fail. Now, Father, take care of all those that are on the front line. Father, take care of all those families that find themselves struggling right now. Father, I'm asking you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, do for them what they're asking you to do. Father, we pray for any that may be unsaved. Touch them right now and allow them to come to you just as they are. Father, we'll always give you the praise and we'll always give you the glory. It's in the mighty in the name of Jesus the Christ that we do ask you. God, God bless you, God keep you.